Hey guys, it's Vince over at CG Vinyl Studio. Today I'm bringing you a video um, showing you the difference of the, the actual variants of commercially available inkjet printable vinyls. Um, we wanted to do this mainly because we get questions every day um, varying from, you know, what's the difference between your vinyl, why are you claiming it to be professional, um, and so what we decided to do is we took it upon ourselves to make the investment, purchase all the other brands of vinyl that we could find that were on the market that you guys are most familiar with, and actually show you definitively what the difference is. Okay, first one we have here is Papilio, and again, you guys mostly know Papilio. Uh, it's been around pretty much forever. It's a uh, waterproof vinyl. Um, just to give you guys a, a real quick breakdown, all vinyl is waterproof. It's rubber-based substrate, so it's all the material itself is going to be waterproof. Your inkjet ink, the ink that you apply to the substrate, is not. That being said, for optimal results, and I could care less what all these manufacturers claim as far as them being waterproof, for optimal results, you'll want to treat it more or less like a base coat a clear coat paint job, and that is that you'd go with a base coat, which would actually go upon the vinyl, which is where your ink is just printing on the vinyl itself, and then you'd go over with an over laminate, which would essentially be clear coat on an automotive paint job. If you think in those terms, you cannot really fail as far as getting professional results as long as you can apply everything correctly. Now, the printer is one variable you guys have no control over. Um, if you're using a, uh, a higher-end inkjet printer, and when I say higher-end, I'll give you a quality perspective and price. I've done a video covering this before, but we still get tons of questions about this. If you, if you actually have a printer in the price range of $100 to $300, Odds are your print quality is going to be far better than, than typically printers in you know the $30 to $50 range. Inkjet printing has changed a lot over the years. However, the ink substrate, uh, the ink material, I should say, that they're actually using as far as how they actually uh, chemically make the inks, they're still based in a water-based format. So, of course, any type of water that hits your ink on an unsealed substrate, it's even if it is claiming to be waterproof, odds are it's not going to hold up under the elements and really provide the durability of a professional uh, grade application. So just keep that in mind. What we've got here, once again with Papilio, is they are claiming that their substrate is waterproof. It does appear to be water resistant. As far as it being waterproof long term, I don't know. We're just doing a quick test here to show you exactly what's going on. Uh, being in the printing industry, as long as I have been, I've never seen uh, really an inkjet printable material hold up under any type of elements for any duration without over laminate. That being said, you can see here the gloss perspective difference, and I'm just going to let you guys see detail. We just did an arbitrary um, print of one of our graphics to show you the, the level of detail in the graphics. You can see that on this glossy material, you, you definitely do get high definition um, graphics. One thing you don't get, and I've got a light here, and this is just an LED light you get at Harbor Freight, okay? It shines pretty much a blue pigment light. And um, another thing I want to bring up is the other light that we actually have um, shining on, the, on these units is an OT light, okay? Right there you can see it's an OT light. Why we chose an OT light is it's natural lighting to give you guys an honest color perspective of what you'd be seeing. Um, we get a lot of questions on how ink is actually affected by the substrate. And we wanted to let you know, of course, uh, or I should say let you visibly see the difference in what you can expect when you print from, again, a Papilio, a Cricut, CG Vinyl Studio. That's, that's what we want to do is give you that ultimate perspective. So once again, we've got two different lights here. Outlight provides natural lighting. Photographers uh, understand the whole concept of natural lighting. When you're doing graphics, you certainly want your, your product to look the best it can possibly look. Therefore... Um, having all of the tools, and once again, we don't want to cut any corners. We want it to keep it at a professional level. We provide the professional tools so that you guys can see exactly what the end result would come out with. So what I'm going to do now is just pan back the camera slightly. Once again, I've got this LED light. I'm going to turn it on now, and I want to point out some things. You can see on a glossy substrate, you're getting some light reflection. I'm going to pan up the light a little bit, and you can see the LEDs right here, that shadowing. As I rotate the light down, you can see it's hazy. It's there, but it's definitely hazy. If I shine it into the ink, you can also see that it's hazy. Okay, it's the ink pattern on these prints. They look really well. I mean, they do. They look good. 
it does not look bad. Um, some of the things that you're going to see when we pan over to our vinyl is you're going to see that the blue pigment is going to give you a richer color. You're also going to get a richer color in the dark blue as well as the gray pigment because one thing about Papilio that we've noticed is that your ink is penetrating the substrate. And guys, when your ink is actually getting actually embedded into the substrate because it penetrates it, you're never going to have ink floating on top similar once again to paint. So you're kind of losing some of the effect of the ink as far as what kind of depth and clarity you're looking for. And once again, if you look at this, I'm going to turn the light on again. I'm going to leave the camera where it is. You can see your clarity is there. I'm rotating the light. I'm just going to rotate it. And you can see it's there, but the light is dim. It's kind of fuzzy. Okay. Again, you do get a clear print. It looks good but it's definitely got a haziness to it. And once again, you can definitely see it here as I rotate the light, you could see how hazy it becomes. Your, your grays are a little bit off. Your blue is a little bit off because the ink is penetrating the substrate. Now, they're gonna claim, and this is what most of these manufacturers claim, is that this is acceptable because the substrate now is waterproof. Once again, whether it's water resistant or waterproof, that's up to the end user to decide. I would not sell my client anything that is not laminated because if you do, you're basically playing with fire and in, in, in actually representing a product as professional grade where it can be destroyed, okay? And it destroyed very easily. Once again, I will refer back to an automotive paint finish. When you put your base coat on, you would naturally go over with a clear coat. Why do manufacturers do that? They do it to protect the base coat as well as offer that gloss, that high luster that clients are paying for. Um, when you guys are doing graphics, odds are you're gonna to wanna to use a glossy substrate because that's gonna give you the highest definition effect and that's what most people are paying for. There are applications where matte is okay. We do get questions about that a lot. Um, but one of the biggest things is is understanding the type of substrate. Now, Papilio is claiming a thickness of two mil on their vinyl. That is extremely thin. Our vinyl is three mil, okay? Um, you're looking at about three thousandths of an inch, two thousandths of an inch for Papilio. Um, the thinner the substrate, again, the durability factor is always a catch between thin substrate and compound curve uh, applications. Um, naturally, the thinner substrate should go over compound curves better once again, is it in an effect of durability? You're looking at a thousandth of an inch difference. And guys, a thousandth of an inch uh, is virtually nothing. I mean, it's barely seen with the naked eye. So what we're going to look at now is I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to go wide on the camera to show both substrates. Okay, this way you can see the difference between ours and Papilio's. Okay, once again, I'm going to do a light test because this is going to tell you right away. You can see here you got that haze that's forming. As I rotate the light, and you could do it on the ink, you can come over here, you can see how it's kind of hazy. I'm just moving it slow. Now I'm gonna transpire it and go over to ours and watch, watch what happens. Look at the clarity difference. I mean, look at the reflection just in the ink. This is because what you're seeing here is properly um, it's actually a properly applied inkjet coating. And why I say properly applied, if it's not atomized properly like paint, because the inkjet coating, just so you guys know, that's what actually makes the ink stick to the substrate. If that is not applied correctly with proper atomization, just like painting, you will see what happens. Now, once again, they're going to claim, and I'm assuming they would claim, that that has to do more with the fact that this is a waterproof substrate. And once again, I go back to what I told you guys earlier. All vinyl is waterproof. You can validate that yourself. And again, as we come back and come back, look at the difference. It, it, literally night and day difference. Let me just shine down. There you go. This way I could stay in that same realm. Come over here. As a matter of fact, if you look high right about there, you can see the reflection of the out light. Okay? As I pivot the, the actual lens on the um, LED light, you could see the reflection is almost blinding. As I go through the ink, you can even see the LED is penetrating and giving you that depth of clarity. Okay, there is a huge difference here. If we come over here, 
you can see it's there, but once again, you're not getting that reflective quality. You're not getting that true depth and that, that high luster that you're hoping for if you're doing graphic work. Because I have some people out there that I know are probably saying, wow, you're really being technical. Well, I'm being technical because I don't know who you're actually selling your products to, but I value my name and I'm sure as, as well as you do yourself. And you want to offer a quality substrate. You want to offer them depth and clarity that is what you would hope for when, it's, when you're actually selling a graphic. So now what I'm going to do is this is our vinyl, okay? I'm just going to let the camera sit there a second. And now I'm going to show you, and if you look here at the difference of the blue, and again, I'm going to pan back over so you can see, you could see the colors and, and the actual tone is a little bit different. You could see the gray is a little truer. You could see the blue is more true. It's got a denser uh, blue quality. The tones are all right. Um, once again, I know you guys are all most likely using graphic software, so you can manipulate to your heart's content. But with a proper substrate, you shouldn't have to retouch for an hour. You know, I mean, it shouldn't be but a 10-minute job of you just dialing everything in. Once again, looking at the light reflection, you can easily see. You could see the depth and clarity. It's, it's, it's just like I said, it's night and day difference. Um, that being said, the main difference that is causing this is, like I said, it's atomization of the actual inkjet coating. It's a very, very fine atomization. The secondary principle is, is that your ink is not penetrating this substrate, okay? Ours is a 3 mil vinyl. It features PVC backing, okay? Um, Papilio has got more of a paper backing. I, I don't know exactly what material it is. We, they both use acrylic adhesive, so again, professional all the way. Um, but I cannot emphasize enough that you are not getting ink that's penetrating this substrate. So that means essentially what it's doing is sitting right there on top of the substrate, meaning all of that ink is building up and giving you that high luster effect, more like painting. Okay, once you go over this substrate, with your over laminate, we prefer 3M Scotch Cal 8518 because of its durability. And again, um, there's a reason NASCAR uses it. I mean, guys, I don't really have to say much more than that. 3M is an aerospace company. If you're not familiar with them, check them out. Um, when you put that stuff on, matter of fact, um, we're going to get a sample to show you of one of our graphics that actually has that applied. So you'll be able to see right now, this is in a base code format, meaning both of these prints... Neither of these have any lamination done to them, okay? But like I said, just looking at this, and if you see here, you can even see I'm bending the out light down, and you can see Papilio. There's no reflection. As soon as I come back over here, you can see the reflection, okay? If you feel that that's de directly not going to be seen on your prints, you're sadly mistaken. I mean, this is something that... I wanted you guys to see firsthand because this is something that we've experimented with for years to actually dial everything in. And we wanted to make sure that we gave you guys every opportunity to see what we've seen. And this is why we know our product is superior. Okay. On top of the longevity effect, when you do pr provide a professional product with lamination. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the Cricut. This is our gloss, and I'm going to show you, you guys, um, the difference between our gloss substrate and, of course, our mat. And we're going to do that with the Cricut, and we're going to do it with our CG Vinyl Studio mat. So now I'm just going to hang that up real quick. Here is our Cricut. Now, of course, our Cricut vinyl, you can see the backing on this. We have a little masking tape so we can shine this in just like it would be applied. Um, Cricut vinyl, I don't know the thickness on. Um, we couldn't find any information as far as the actual thickness of the material. I will say this, um, the way this vinyl came bundled, um, as far as being packaged, we ordered it off Amazon, it was horrible how we received it. It was folded. Um, there's no rigidity to the packaging, which means that you, the end user, will receive a product that you're going to have to wait a day or two to let it really properly flatten and give you the end result you're looking for. We were really not happy with that. And here is our matte vinyl. And once again, if you look at these close, one of the biggest things that I, I'm hoping the camera can actually show, I'm going to come up here real close. Our vinyl, when it's matte, is extremely bright. I cannot emphasize that enough. The white is at a totally different pigment level than crickets. Now in this camera, it may be showing that the cricket looks brighter, but I assure you, our white uh, matte vinyl is some of the brightest I've seen. Okay. 
Um, again, it has a lot to do with the inkjet coating. Mostly matte vinyl always feels, whether, whatever brand it is, it always feels more like a textured paper. Okay, and once again, what we find here, if we review these, is that you're going to see that the Cricut, I'm just going to pan in there real quick, you're going to see that the color spectrum on the Cricut, it's, it's close. It's a little closer because, again, your substrate is still absorbing your ink, but the color pigment here, again, is still lighter because you're getting a lot more absorption. You do have clients, or I should say, I do have clients that will look at this and say, you know, matte vinyl is acceptable because, uh, again, they're not, they really have never had any experience using an actual glossy product that was acceptable. When you see the difference in luster from a glossy product to a matte, it's like night and day. And I can't emphasize that enough. The camera's probably not going to show it too well. But I'll give you an idea, and I'm going to be fair about it. I'm even going to hold up Papilio's, and I'll show you Papilio's in comparison. And you can see that just looking at the blues there, this gives you a totally different effect than using matte. Matte gives you that dull, I mean, it's really not designed for graphics. It gives you more of a dull look, gives you more of a flattened look, because, again, the penetration factor is a little greater than that of a glossy substrate. So now that you see that, keep in mind that's going to affect your color palette. You know, the more those, the more that ink penetrates the substrate, your colors are not going to be exact. Okay. There's a reason why when photographers print on glossy photo paper, they're using a glossy paper because it's more like a plastic, which lets that ink really build and it keeps that depth of color and those, that color palette where it should be. So just keep that in mind. Once again, this is Cricut. Now I'm going to come over to ours. And you can plainly see... Again, as far as clarity, you're getting a little richer color because we're not penetrating as much of the substrate. That's going to give you a little richer color. And again, as far as durability, we don't know the thickness of the Cricut. Our, all of our materials are 3 mil in thickness. So again, three, three thousandths of an inch in thickness. Once again, PVC backed right here. PVC backed. Um, and again, that's, that's why we have fallen in love with this design because it works extremely well and it gives you a depth of color once again whether you're using matte whether you're using uh for whatever your application may be using matte or using glossy that's what we're really looking at we want to have give you guys the most options for what you're trying to do now there is a couple more substrates we offer that we didn't do because we wanted to just give you guys a generalization we do have a polypropylene we do have a black or, or a matte uh blackout vinyl which blackout vinyl, we get questions on all the time, just to give you guys a heads up. Blackout vinyl is used in, in areas where you do not want light to penetrate your graphic. If you held it up to the sun, you don't want that light to show through to where your graphic will still be solid. So keep that in mind. We do have that option as well. I've never seen that option offered anywhere else online, but when we actually carry it, because it was, it was an option that I feel is offered in the, in the uh, pro-grade industry. A lot of people don't even know it exists, but if you're uh, an office owner or you're doing graphics for a business, let's say, where there's clear windows and you want to make sure that that graphic is going to be bold and not be, you know, during the, the hottest part of the day or where the sun's penetrating, it won't actually be transparent because the graphic is actually getting, you know, transparent due to light shining through. That's where you look at that application. Very cool product. Works extremely well. Um, graphics on anything that you're more or less not wanting light to shine through on. So just keep that in mind. Um, polypropylene. Give you another idea. I'm just covering everything we've got. Polypropylene is an extremely durable vinyl. If you guys have boats, if you have areas where you're looking at underwater use, extended underwater use, polypropylene is your best friend. Um, it's a plastic. I mean, polypropylene, just so you guys all are aware, most water bottles have large amounts of polypropylene, if not 100% polypropylene. So it gives you an idea of its durability to moisture. So thinking about that, it gives you an, a culmination as far as, you know, what kind of products we offer and what kind of product end result you're getting. Now, polypropylene, I'll give you a, a total idea. We're going to do an another video to show you what it's like to print on it. I think I've done one previous. The finish is very, very similar to our gloss. 
I would say it's identical. Um, again, your inks are going to sit on top because polypropylene, you're not going to have that depth of pen that depth penetration that you get with a mat. So you're definitely going to see the brightness. You're going to see the contrast show through that. You know, if you're a photographer, if you're someone that really is doing sharp graphics and you want them to look really pro, that's what you're going to want to go with in really high stress environments. Again, we're looking at environments, um, anything from automotive use, anything from, and I say automotive use, I mean, there, when I say automotive, I'm talking in terms of outdoor use all the time, underwater use possibly all the time. You know, normal vinyl, glossy vinyl can hold up under mild conditions, meaning that, you know, your car is garaged, you're not leaving it out in the sun 24-7. Um, those are applications that I would say poly is going to be your best friend, okay? As you get into more industrial type graphics, um, truckers have a lot of the uh, DOT uh, uh, printings on their side of their truck so that if a DOT officer pulls them over, uh, you'll see them all over the semi trucks. Those are really, really done well using um, polypropylene for that reason. Um, but just like I said, this gives you guys a real lowdown. Once again, I'm going to pan out now and let you see them both. And you can see the difference. I mean, the, the, without a doubt, there is definitely a difference. I'm going to move the light over so you can just see right here. You can definitely see there is a color difference from ours to theirs. You're getting, a, like I said, the ink is just not penetrating as much, which gives you a bolder color palette. And that's something that I was looking at when, you know, we were actually looking at the chemistry of these because it had to come out to where, again, we would be proud of it. And it would give you the end result that you were looking for. Once again, I cannot emphasize this enough. Cricut is, is explaining, I believe it's supposed to be... I don't know if it's water resistant. I don't know, honestly, if the Cricut is. It certainly doesn't say it on its actual packaging. I'm looking at it right now, and I don't see if it is. However, like I stated earlier, you really are, you're really supposed to use a, a professional over laminate, and that's based upon what you decide to use. I know Cricut has an over laminate, I'm sure. Um, Papilio has their own over laminate. Um, again, we use a 3M8518 Scotch Cal over laminate. Um, if you guys want your graphics to look like it's painted, this is the over laminate to use. Now, one of the other questions we get continuously is about applying over laminate, okay? App applying an over laminate that's professional is not going to be done by hand. Guys, the over laminate is literally two thousandths of an inch in thickness, okay? Being it's two thousandths of an inch in thickness, you're certainly not going to be able to apply that by hand. As soon as you go to peel it off, this is 3M, okay? This is really professional grade quality uh, component. So once you go to peel the backing off, it's going to wrinkle, it's going to crinkle. I mean, it's very, very delicate. I mean, we're talking, you know, thousands of an inch in thickness and super, super, super clear. Um, the acrylic adhesive on it is amazing. It seals in, it seals out, excuse me, moisture, makes everything waterproof, uh, virtually scratch resistant, super high quality. That being said, you need a professional cold roll laminator to apply it. Okay. Don't purchase this lamination and think that you're going to do it by hand. You're never going to get professional results. You're going to be very disheartened with the product because you got to have the right tools to use it. If you're a painter, you would never use a cheap air gun to spray your paints. You would actually go out and buy the right gun for the right job. That's how you're going to do graphics. It should be the exact same thing. If you want to produce quality, you have to have the quality tools to get you to that level. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at this. Another question that comes up all the time, because now you're seeing a matte. We're looking at the matte vinyls. One question comes up all the time. Well, you know, I'll turn it into a glossy substrate by applying a glossy overlamin. Guys, that does not turn this into a glossy substrate, okay? I cannot emphasize that enough. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you take a glossy when you take a glossy substrate and you print on it. This is what kind of colors you can get and look at that shine. Look at that. There is no way you're going to get that depth that you got with this. Okay, you can see as I'm just pivoting the light, look at the look at the shine and depth inside of this. Okay, this is on our glossy our glossy vinyl, and again applied with uh, 3M8518, and you can see exactly what you've got here. Okay, just a reflection alone, it looks like wet paint. I mean, ultimately that's what you're looking for. 
Um, you will get that wet look with the 8518 applied to a mat. What you will not get is the depth and clarity. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough. When you look at a glossy vinyl versus a mat, there is a huge difference, especially as I come in and we look at it from a, a close perspective, okay, and you look at a mat from a close perspective, you're going to find that the mat has that, that really like more of a textured finish. It's, it's fuzzy. It becomes more fuzzy because your pixel count is being manipulated by the paper because once again, it's penetrating. So that being said, keep that in mind. If you want the clear, really concise HD type effect, and once again, this is our vinyl with no lamination. Look at that. Look at the gloss. Look at this. That's just the art light. Now I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to go to the Papilio. Once again, look at the difference. You can see that it's there, but you definitely have a textured pattern on here that there is no comparison. No comparison. There's the there's reflection of the out light, and there's their reflection of the out light. It's night and day. So, and again, it's night and day. Both of these are night and day on a matte substrate. Okay, if you're doing graphics, matte is really not what you're going to want to be using for most of your clients. Now, if you're doing something that doesn't require, you know, a high luster finish, uh, as far as definition, you can still get that luster from actually applying the 8518, but you're not going to get that really crisp look that you get with that HD look of using a, uh, a glossy lamp or excuse me, a glossy vinyl. That's what I want you guys to understand, because once again, we get that question all the time. And once again, doing this, I think seeing it up hand, you know, looking at all the vinyls that are pretty much offered in the market, you can see the difference firsthand. And that's really what we wanted to do. The other factor to keep in mind, we are, of course, shooting this. I'm shooting this in an H with an HD camera. The color palette's always going to be slightly different when you actually go digitizing this. So just keep that in mind as you see it. But there is no, no, uh, no way of, of actually falsifying what you're seeing with the light penetration on a glossy substrate. It's, it's a night and day difference. So now what I want to discuss to finalize this, because I think you guys have a good idea now of the differences that you can see on what's commercially offered and, again, what the difference is between ours and what, what you're finding. Another major difference that I want to discuss, which I brought up a little bit about with the Cricut in the beginning of the video, is just how different these vinyls come packaged okay and why i say that's important of course the quality of your product is important but if you're receiving the product and it's you know it's it's banged up it's bent it's folded you certainly can't use it you wouldn't want to use it okay then you have to go through the process of flattening it you know if you're going to sell a product understand what you're selling a lot of these vendors are you know worrying more about the the quantity that they sell than the quality of the product that you get and when I say that, it really shows in shipping. Here is the Cricut vinyl that we had. And this was, we ordered this off Amazon. And you can see there is virtually nothing in this package to make this actually stand up to shipping. How it was, we ordered a couple other things on Amazon and this was folded just like this. A lot of the sheets had creases in it. If you look at this sheet, you can see our registration marks when we're going to do a uh, contour cut. These are crooked because we had to cut the sheet because again, it, it had a head collision with the printer because it would not flatten out. I cannot emphasize guys, how you purchase your vinyl as far as how it's packaged is gonna affect overall your finish, okay? It's, it's really that simple. This is the substrate you're putting your inks on and if you get this in and it's folded up, most of the time, um, I know a lot of our crafting women, um, crafting men for that matter, go to Michael's, go to Hobby Lobby and it's hung up on one of those pins on a shelf, that's fine. Um, but if you mail order it, be conscientious because this vinyl comes in without any support structure whatsoever. I have no idea what it would cost the company to actually put some corrugate in there to do this right, to make sure that you're purchasing it and it's not all folded and you'll be able to use it immediately without possible head collisions with your printer. Um, that being said, um, well, I'm, I'm looking at it here, and I told you guys earlier in the video that I didn't know if this was waterproof vinyl, but looking at it right here on their actual, uh, I guess, instructions, it says non-washable. 
so they're more or less letting you know this isn't even waterproof, which is good. I'm glad that they're actually saying that because many of them claim to be waterproof. And once again, I, I really think that's really stretching the truth in some aspects as far as durability. Now I'm going to go to Papilio. And you can see, um, once again, waterproof vinyl. Yeah, okay. Uh, and again, compatible with all inkjet printers. I will say this came much better packaged. It does have a nice uh, corrugated um, container. And I'll show you how it is. Uh, they're claiming it's two mil. It's completely waterproof, which it is. All vinyl, once again, is waterproof. They did, they used their head and they actually used a very nice um, corrugated support that was inside. And it actually made this very stiff so that your vinyl was ready to be used virtually out of the container, which we recommend. That's the way you should receive it. Again, we did get, this was shipped in a bubble envelope. Um, we just, I'm not real big on using bubble envelopes because again, uh, unless you're using uh, very good corrugated support, you're essentially dealing with folds, dents, like right here. We don't know what caused this. This came in shipping. But just so you guys are aware, once again, you're investing your hard-earned money. You want to have um, professional results. Your packaging on, if there's one thing I can say in, in one field, your packaging when it comes to these substrates, anything you're going to print on, whether you're a photographer, graphics designer, um, just a hobbyist, if you want professional results, make sure that you're purchasing stuff that's packaged properly because nothing sucks worse than you throwing out two or three sheets because they just didn't take the time to do it right or research proper packaging. Okay, now I'm going to go over to one of our, our packages, and this is what we use, guys. Okay, everything is labeled fragile, and I'm going to pan the camera back now so you can see. This is triple corrugate, okay? When you receive your product, this is literally almost as thick as quarter-inch plywood, okay? It, it's virtually impossible for it to be bent unless, uh, obviously, the uh, USPS decides to run it over or something, you know, obligatory happens that, again, normal, normal use, you would never see it as far as it exceeding that kind of capacity for what you're shipping. But this is incredibly durable, okay? We want to do it to where you guys receive a product. When you open this up, again, we use our heads. We use masking tape. The reason we use masking tape, it's a lot quicker to release. You don't need to use, you know, ridiculous amounts of force to tear it. And this way your substrate is always safe. Once you open this up, it does. it's folded so that this sleeve, once you open it up, your vinyl is essentially ready to be printed on. OK, um, if you order multiple products from us, we use thumb tags to identify every product you order. OK, now, can we handle what Papilio does or Cricut does in terms of volume? No, probably can't because I don't want to handle that. I would rather give you a product that I know you're going to receive and be happy with and be able to use it right out of the package and know that you got what you paid for and you're getting the end result that you paid for. I don't want to look at, you know, like I said, the bigger companies, they're looking at quantity. We're looking at quality first. Then we can worry about the quantity. I would much rather you get a product you're happy with and build clients knowing that you're receiving what you need and doing exactly what you want as far as end result for your clients. And once you do that, then the business will grow organically. We don't have to force growth by just releasing product. That's not what we're here to do. And that's why, once again, to do a full review, understanding the packaging and understanding what goes in to building these packages to make sure you guys get the product you want, it's so important. If you look at this sleeve, compared to this, the way this came. And again, you're, I know you're taking my word for this, but if you order from Amazon, most of, you, most of my women out there, and, and again, most of my guys that are doing crafts, you're probably nodding your head right now and understanding exactly what I'm saying. They just don't package this appropriately as far as the Cricut. And then of course, the Papilio, um, again, much better packaging. Uh, them telling you that it's a waterproof vinyl. Once again, we already established that all vinyl is waterproof. Um, and, and again, it's a very good product. I mean, they're all very good for what they do. I mean, as far as them holding ink, I don't think that's the question. But as far as professional grade, I will say this. Um, once again, I'll let the pictures speak louder than the words. When you see a graphic that's done with the proper lamination done and everything here is sealed properly. There is no 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 proof greater than seeing those that color spectrum pop or seeing your client smile because they got a graphic that they were looking to get. 
I mean, nine out of 10 times, we are told that this far exceeds anyone's expectation. When we, we go through our eBay store, we go through YouTube, whoever receives the products, they're amazed because they can't believe that an inkjet printer did this when 98% of all graphics actually do come from inkjet. The difference is it's the substrates. And I can't emphasize enough, knowing the industry, it makes it easy to pick the right substrates and formulate the right chemical formulations to give us the best effect that we're looking for. And that's what we try to do. I just wanted you guys to be aware of what's out there. And now you've seen it firsthand. Everything was printed on the same printer. I know I'm going to get questions about that. It was all the same printer. Um, as far as the printer brands to use, because we do get questions about that all the time, if you guys are looking at you know, uh, Epson, Canon, HP, those are pretty much the top brands. I love Canon. Um, HP is very good. Epson is excellent. Um, those three you really can't go wrong with. Just stay away from the ultra budget models. You know, I once again, we've done videos on this in the past, and I've, I've tried to be as, um, you know, conclusive about what kind of printers to stay away from. If you guys are using um, your printer for scrapbooking and you've got an investment of 50 bucks, be reasonable to the color palette you're expecting, okay? Um, clarity should still be there, but the color palette's not gonna be there like a printer that you know is in excess of 2,000 pixels. It's just not gonna happen. So be aware of that. Um, if you guys are looking at contour cutting for graphics, you know, um, again, Looking at this graphic, this was contour cut on a GraphTech. Okay, GraphTech is a pro-grade um, machine. If you're using a GraphTech, a Roland, um, a Mimaki, whatever your, your preference is for your plotter or your vinyl cutter, that to me is what's going to make the difference of the quality of the graphics you're producing. Okay, I can't emphasize that enough as well. If you take the time to calibrate the machine, it's going to give you nice lines. Your cuts are going to be all symmetrical. And once again, the client will see that. And the business comes to you because of the quality of the product. You don't have to do too much with graphics because ultimately, let's be real, you're advertising as soon as that client receives the product and puts it on whatever they're putting it on. There's your advertising. I mean, word of mouth is going to travel, um, not to mention with Facebook and all the other social media networks out there. You won't have problem getting business if you're doing the right work and using the right products and that's why i say when i say products the end product is a result of proper process proper tools understanding the tools and then again applying it to the proper substrate so i think you guys now have a really good feel of what you can expect and once again um what you're looking at as far as investing because again as far as um actual pricing i'm just seeing if i can fit everything up here probably can't i'll just lay them down but um, looking at these, like I said, all these different substrates, you can definitely see that you've got quite an assortment to choose from virtually for every application. And that's, again, what we wanted to do. And now you guys understand all the different equipment. Um, if you guys do have specific questions about your equipment, I cannot emphasize enough. Give us more details. We, we get a lot of messages that I have to say, and I mean, the easiest way to say it, it's kind of half-assed. You know, that you're quick to type it out, but you're not quick to give us the details. Everything in this industry is details. You are essentially manufacturing. If you're not going to provide us the right details, of course, we can't give you the proper result that you're looking for because support can only be based upon the level of detail you provide us. The more details you give me, the more I can tell you about what you're either doing wrong or what you're not thinking about. Um, when you handle vinyl, all vinyl should be handled with out your fingers. You should be using gloves. Um, and those gloves should be preferably nylon based. Um, we're about to release some new products that incorporate the gloves that we use because, again, it'll keep fingerprints off of it. Um, you, you definitely don't want finger oil on, this, on any of the vinyl. Um, and again, as far as cleaning the vi vinyl, as far as before laminating, I'm going to go back to my scenario about discussing, you know, doing... Uh, when you're painting an automobile and you're thinking about putting your, your uh, clear coat on or even your base coat, you have to go through with a tack rag. You, you want to make sure that there's no dust present. Well, when you're doing vinyl, it's the exact same thing. You don't want dust present. I don't recommend a tack cloth because it can contaminate the substrate. Um, but what I would recommend is compressed air. Okay, Compressed air is going to be your best friend. Non-contact 
Um, again, you can buy a small compressor, use it. It'll give you excellent, excellent results if you understand, again, you don't want to have 100 PSI coming out of the gun or you're obviously going to possibly blow ink off because it's just too strong. I mean, a lot of this is common sense. and I know you guys are laughing about it, but I'm telling you now, these are things that you'll learn as you practice more and more and more. And that's what makes you, you know, a craftsman with this art. And that's really what it is. But giving you guys a heads up and letting you know, you know, what's possible and showing you the end result. Once again, you know, this was not a week's worth of practice right here. This is, this is time and years spent trying to find the best products. And you can see, I know we've done it. I know we found some of the best products to give you the effect you're looking for. And again, um, the clients and you guys out there supporting us, it represents that. You know, we, we love all you guys that support us and we want to really dedicate more time to this channel and I'm definitely going to because I know there's not much in this industry as far as learning. You just, you kind of go, you know, it's very secretive. I feel that a lot of, a lot of uh, vendors don't want to discuss it. Um, a lot of these vendors that sell vinyl, they won't discuss much as far as, you know, printing and, and how to do graphics and, you know, and, and taking things to a new level. Because, guys, let's be real. If you're cutting vinyl still because that's your business, that's fine. And I'm not putting anybody down for that. But I personally feel vinyl cutting is so 1985. You know, I mean, we have the technology now to do full on graphics. And I can tell you right now, if you're looking for a profitable, uh, profitable market, nothing beats graphic design compared to, you know, just cutting shapes out of vinyl. I don't care if you're doing two, three laminations in different colored vinyl. Bottom line is, is that when you start applying graphics to whatever it may be, you will find that the profit will follow. And it's, it's, a, it's a learned trade, it's a learned skill, but you will definitely see a difference in, in your actual market value. So just keep that in mind as you guys expand your business, or if you're just starting a business, that's always something to look at. You do have a steeper learning curve, but that learning curve comes with great rewards if you're willing to invest the time. So once again, I hope you guys have learned something today. I wanted to make it as, as complete as possible. I'm sorry if the video carried over a little longer. If you guys have any questions, um, you can either message me or my name is Vince or uh, Joanna. She's my girlfriend and, and nine out of 10 times, she's going to answer most of the questions. But um, either way, like I said, if you guys do send us some, some questions or you're requesting some details, please be specific. If you do have some material that you want to discuss or, you know, we do get a lot of questions on, on other material, namely Papilio and other vinyls that, you know, have been on the market. Um, but I think overall this video should answer a lot of your questions and your concerns. But if you do have any questions, once again, uh, we'll put all of our um, contact information underneath the video so you have all that and you guys will be all set. Thank you for your time. Take care.